the machine as victories in the second race of the season. You saw it here on NBC as he won his first IndyCar race at Long Beach. He's now on the charge once again, running in second place and trying to run down Rick Mears. And at the same time, take a look at this. A.J. Foyt and Tom Sneba as they battle for fifth place. Al Unser Sr., the 11 car, is currently in 15th place. He's three laps behind the leader, but look at Foyt. Paul, I think that's the old Foyt back with us again. He is racing like he did when he was young. He's had a lean race all day. Bobby Rahal, the leader of the race. Rick Mears is in second place. Michael Andretti is in third. And look at this as Sneva pulls up to challenge Foyt again. A tremendous battle as they fight for fifth place around this super speedway at Michigan International. And A.J. Foyt has fifth as he leads Sneva across the line. And right there, Paul, you have three of the best oval track races in history going around Michigan all right together. Now, Emerson Fittipaldi ready to talk. Let's go down to the Patrick Pitts and Gary Gerald. Oh, a year ago, you were the winner of this race, the Michigan 500 champion. What was the problem today? Uh, the car was running very fast. I was very happy with the performance. Uh, the engine just blew. I'm very disappointed because the balance was just perfect. My car was very, very good. A crash, a crash. Excuse me, Gary, but Randy Lanier against the wall really smacked it. He's conscious he's moving in the car, but heavy damage to the right side. Oh, that's more than heavy damage. That car is beat up on every end. Really a bad wreck. The calling lies up in the line on the course. Of course, the yellow flag is out. Randy Lanier is still in the car. The rescue crews are there, and that car is totally destroyed. If you notice, the right front suspension is clear up against the tub. That means that a lot of that stuff has got to be inside the car, meaning the suspension, Paul. So they work with Randy Lanier. The yellow is out, an ideal time now for pit stop, as we'll watch the leader, Bobby Rahal. He's on the pit road now and rolling down toward his pit as they work with Randy Lanier. There is Rahal. Back the same thing now, the first in, the first out. So that's going to be a contest. Let's go to the pits of Gary Gerald. The race leader now, he'll take a drink of water. They'll give him fresh rubber on the right side, also the left rear. Top him off, of course, with fuel. He was about eight to ten laps away from a scheduled stop when the yellow came on for the Randy Lanier crash. Ray Hall quickly serviced. He's back on the course. Bobby Ray Hall roars back into action as he checks his strap and rolls out of the pits. At the same time, Rick Mears and Allinger Jr. are in the pits. There goes Rick Mears as he gets out around Little Al, and Little Al moves back to fourth place as a result of these stops. That'll show you how important the pit stops are, Paul. Look how bad that car Randy's is. Everything is in at least to where the engine normally is. That's really a bad one. And there is more trouble with this situation. Two of the card observers have been hit by debris and emergency teams are with them now, so we have the situation on the track as they pull Randy Lanier out of his race car, and emergency crews work on the outside of the wall with a couple of observers who are positioned right next to where Randy Lanier actually hit the wall. Well, that's three people, one wreck, and Randy didn't look too good right there. I hope he isn't hurt as bad as he looked in the stretcher ball. And so we are under yellow once again at the Michigan 500. We're back at the Michigan 500. The shattered car of Randy Lanier being brought back to the garage area. The condition of Lanier is still in doubt. Let's go to Bruce. Dr. Olvey, I see they have the helicopter all warmed up. It's taken Randy Lanier out to the hospital. Could you give us a report on his condition? Yeah, Randy's got a fracture, apparent fracture of his right leg and also some injuries to his right knee. The plan is, to, that's all right now, the plan is to send him to Foot Hospital in Jackson, Michigan for x-rays and examination and then we'll probably transfer him to Indianapolis Methodist Hospital later this evening uh, to have his leg uh, fixed at that time. The helicopter warms up at the hospital area. Now, no word on the two parts officials, Robert Venice and Brian Brown, their identities, but no indication on their condition. We'll wait for that report as well as we're ready to go back to green flag racing at the Michigan 500 once again. Tom Sneva, a lengthy stop for him, will start this race in ninth place. But more importantly, he'll start once again at the back of the serial. As Bobby Rahal leads the race, Sneva will have the job of trying to work his way back up through this starting field once again. 
and there is Ray Hall being chased by Michael Andretti. Allenser Jr. gives chase to Rick Mears as they battle first and second and third and fourth. There is Ray Hall, Michael Andretti right on the charge, right behind him, pulls to the inside. The battle is for the lead at the Michigan 500. Can Michael Andretti get past Bobby Ray Hall? Ray Hall has it high and stays there as Rick Mears has managed to hold off Allenser Jr. Here comes Michael Andretti as he tries it once again. Can't get it done. Ray Hall continues his lead at Michigan. Michael Andretti now low as they come to the backstretch. Drops in, picks up the vacuum of Ray Hall's car. Ready to dart out. Give it a try going into three. We've got a car against the wall. And it's Tom Steva. Steva spins around, slams the wall backwards, and slides along the wall. He was trying to charge up through the restart and lost control of the car coming off of two. Now, saw that particular fire, just so the people know, is an oil fire. You can tell from the black smoke coming off of it. It is more of a serious type of a fire than they normally would have. Probably the oil cooler break in the back of the engine. Well, Tom Sneva climbs out of the car after a quick spin up into the wall. The fire crews put that oil fire out, and we have the opportunity to look at this accident once again. We pick it up before the starting line. Wow, that's a close pass by Al. He just about got Tom Sneva. Now let's watch Tom as he goes on through the turn, Paul, and see why he lost it right there. He's up in the groove, nothing wrong right now, no cars causing any problems. He goes on around, still no cars. He's moving up to pass the cars. Right there, he loses it, and be my guess, he just plain lost the car. He was certainly running on the darkened section of the racetrack, so he was running where there was adhesion and not close to anyone else. Then a quick spin, that scrubbed off some speed, and Sneva backs it into the wall. At the same time, he breaks some oil lines, and that starts a little bit of harmless fire at the back of the car. Well, the car certainly isn't bent up very bad, Paul, compared to the way the others have been hitting the wall today. Others involved in accidents, Roberto Guerrero, Steve Chassi, Mario Andretti, and Randy Lanier. We've also had some observers injured. Let's go to the hospital. Bruce Jenner is now with Dr. Greg Bauman. Dr. Bauman, do you have a report on the other spectators or officials who uh, were hurt when they're in the Randy Lanier crash? I do. The other two individuals were apparently uh, cart workers, and they were hit by some debris there. On initial evaluation, it appears that they're... Uh, injuries are going to be minor in nature um, they were sent to the hospital for further examination and some uh, further studies well that's good news on the cart officials observers right against the wall very dangerous area they are certainly the unsung heroes of racing those people the corner workers and rescue teams who help keep these races running safe the sixth caution flag of the afternoon is underway at the michigan 500. We are back at the Michigan 500. The Goodyear Airship Enterprise line us with some terrific coverage shots from high above Michigan International Speedway. Here's the rundown with Bobby Ray Hall leading, Michael Andretti, the current PPG points leader in second place, Rick Mears, Allenser Jr., Scotty Brayton with a good run, Jeff Brabham, Johnny Rutherford, Johnny Parsons, and A.J. Foyt. Jose Lee Garza is one lap behind the leaders as we're ready for the green flag once again. Bobby Rahal will be leading the field at the Michigan 500. Michael Andretti closes up just behind. Little Al jogs out alongside Rick Mears so he can get a good run at him. And we're racing once again. Green flag at the Michigan 500. Rahal still leads it. Rahal with the chance of winning a million dollars if he can win all three 500s in the same season. Remember, Paul, we only have one triple crown winner in history, and that's my brother Al, and Ray Hall is trying to become the second one. And here comes Michael by Ray Hall. He's not going to let him take that race too easy. Michael Andretti gets past Bobby Ray Hall. We have to also remember when your brother won the triple crown, there wasn't a million dollars on the line either. Now, Rick Mears closes up behind Ray Hall. The question, is there some problem with Ray Hall's car as Rick Mears comes down below Bobby Ray Hall, and Rick Mears picks up second place? Is there a problem with Ray Hall? I really don't think there is, Paul. I think it's a simple matter of getting his tires adjusted to the track or maybe a little wing adjustment, but here's the Lau making a swing on him. I don't know, maybe we better watch him and see if there is something wrong. 